The early years are so important, and you see from the speeches of those on this side of the House just how passionate members in this place are about investing in our next generation. Early learners are shaping their brains when they walk into those childcare centres, those kindergartens, uh, those schools, where they actually get that first sense of their own self-worth, that confidence that allows them and drives them through the rest of their life. They're preparing for a future, and you, I think this always hits me, is that we're trying to educate these children for a future that most of us in this place don't even understand what it's going to look like. like if we walk into an early childhood centre today and say, here's what the future is going to look like when you go to find your first job, we don't have an answer for that. Uh, so I think that just gives you a sense of how important the work that educators do on a daily basis in giving the young people all of those life skills that they need to get through whatever the world is going to throw at them. Uh, but they're also, those early learners are actively involved in shaping what sort of a future they want. I think of the kindergarten students at Perth College in my electorate. They have been running a uh, now two-year-long campaign to reduce the amount of plastics in their local community. Uh, they have uh, been researching the oceans, the impacts of plastic. They've been talking to local cafes. They've been encouraging business owners to switch from straws to paper straws. And they've, they've got their, their parents are lobbying, uh, and they came and asked me to come and speak with them so they could lobby me. And uh, fair to say they were some of the more convincing lobbyists that I've seen in my time. Um, as a result, I wrote to the Prime Minister uh, and said, this is what Perth College is doing. This is what the kindergarten students want. And to the Prime Minister's credit, he wrote back. and. Uh, was very appreciative of the work that those young people have done. It, for me, shows the power of early learning, the power of that integration of what showing young people that they do have a voice, that they are valued. And the thing that gets me when we talk about legislation like this is that it doesn't truly recognise the value of those young people. I want to say to the uh, educators, the teachers at Perth College, uh, it's a fantastic school in the Perth electorate, and it was so great to be part of. Uh, that the student-led campaign uh, on eliminating plastics. I'm sure by the time those students are indeed in the workforce, uh, their mission will be hopefully close to complete. But all of us, when we talk about early childhood education, we do have to think about our own experiences because, as the member for Lilly uh, said, it isn't, it isn't a well-integrated system and it is a system that you battle with uh, no matter how lucky you are in life because it's poorly designed. Simple as that. Uh, for me and Jess, we use uh, an early learning centre for Leo three days a week. Uh, my mum, Wendy, does Thursdays, and uh, Leo's nana, Diane, does uh, basically whenever there was a peak point of stress in our lives. She comes from Brisbane over to Perth, and uh, for that reason we don't have a spare room, we have nana's room. Uh, I also am very lucky, I think in Australia, we have some amazing artists uh, who appreciate the value of early learning. It's the teeny tiny Stevies that help us pack away our things every night, sometimes with more success than others. It's Justine Clark that taught us a banana is a banana, but that if a butterfly was really made of butter, its wings would melt in the sun. And Bluey doesn't just do a great job of entertaining Leo, he does a great job of teaching Jess and I in that never-ending piece of learning how to be great parents. Um, in Australia, we are, on the whole, a lucky country and we do have a very good education system. But I'm a bit sick of talking about the childcare crisis. When the member for Lilly said the childcare crisis, I just thought, we've been talking about the childcare crisis for a decade. And it's not because it just sounds good or because you know, people are just trying to score political points. It's because there's an actual crisis. Parents can't get their kids into early learning centres. If they get their kids in, it costs them a fortune. It costs them up to a third of their salary just to have their child in a learning environment in Australia. It is absolutely ridiculous. And this legislation doesn't do any of the hard work, any of the hard thinking, or any of the heavy lifting to actually fix our childcare system in this country. It doesn't support our educators. It doesn't recognise that families are at their wits' end when it comes to childcare. I'm sick of talking about the crisis. Uh, I am absolutely sick of talking about the crisis, but just because I'm sick of it doesn't mean there isn't one. There is a huge crisis. We don't have good enough integration with schooling. We don't have prof proper professional pay and recognition for our educators. 
We have our subsidies centred around the activity of parents <laughs> rather than centred around the interests of the child. Yeah. Uh, we have no way for families to do proper cost control. Uh, indeed, the government's approach is uh, we'll just send them a debt notice at the end of the financial year. I mean, seriously. Uh, and we talk about where Australia ranks in international rankings. Uh, we, we're sort of hit, hiding in the comfortable middle. We don't want to be at the top. We don't want to be the highest funder. We don't want to have the best student outcomes. We don't want to have the highest quality paying conditions for educators. We just kind of hide in the middle. Uh, we're sick of hiding in the middle on things that are important, like education. Um, but for all that's wrong in the early childhood sector, there are some things that are good. We have the national quality framework making sure that every parent has some level of assurance that when they take their child to a recognised centre, that child is going to get a quality education to a standard curriculum that actually is focused on that particular child's needs. And that's all delivered, and this is the other great thing about our system, by trained, qualified early childhood educators. Uh, our educators are the real light in this system. They make sure that everything else works. They make sure it works for parents. They are, for many of us, spend more waking hours with our children uh, than we do. They are truly some of the heroes of the Australian economy, and I say thank you to every single one of them. When it comes to the specifics of this bill, Labor does recognise that, well, uh, it's clear I would like it to go a lot further on basically every possible metric. Uh, it does have some sensible amendments to make accessing childcare easier for many Australian families. But the requirement that families are no longer able to register for the childcare subsidy without immediately providing their tax file number and bank account details yeah. is very short-sighted. The government removing that 28-day grace period uh, actually will, will achieve very little other than pain. Uh, the Labor Party is concerned about this change. The childcare sector is concerned about this change. And worst of all, it will disproportionately affect the families and, most importantly, the children who benefit most from early childhood education. Uh, we know the sort of circumstances that lead to people not being able to have access to those things. Fleeing domestic violence, fleeing natural disaster, uh, other crises that happen, uh, loss of employment, other crises that happen in someone's life. Um, and to deny a child the right to an education because their parents can't do the paperwork, that's just wrong. Um, we should indeed look at what we do in the education system and see that as the model for everything that we build in the early childhood space. You don't, a school will take a student because that child has value, not because of what their parents do or don't do. Um, removing the 28-day period, locking vulnerable families is wrong. 28 days was a terrible movie. 28 days is a terrible policy when it comes to childcare. When you think about the um, impl implementation of this system, these are uh, the new bureaucracy. The, um, the they cut red tape with one hand and they create it with the other. Is the uh, approach of this government? I was lucky to visit with um, the shadow minister for education um, last year, the Leaderville Early Learning Centre, run by uh, I think it's run by Good Start. And I'll, Apologies to, to Leaderville team and Sally at the centre if it's not, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, as they were rolling out this new system, and it was there were delays in being able to register parents. Uh, there was conflicting information from different parts of the bureaucracy about what information they had to be collecting. There was no recognition of the huge workload that this had put on centres. That was a transferring of the work that the government uh, was requiring onto these non-government and private sector organisations. Um, it was at the time, as many of us will remember, it was a bit of a mess. But thankfully, uh, because early childhood educators and those that run centres are some of the most resilient people that you'll meet, it kind of just worked. Um, I don't think that's because of good policy design. It's because the people at the coalface of this sector do just make things work. But there's also been many families who have struggled with the childcare subsidy, struggle with getting what they are entitled to um, from the government. I'm going to tell the story of Yelda and JP, who contacted my office 
uh, struggling. Uh, and you know, they don't, people don't come to members of parliament's office because everything's going well. They come because something is not clicking within the bureaucracy. They've been struggling with the Department of Human Services for some months. They are being significantly underpaid for their childcare subsidy payments. When they contacted the department, the only fact that they were given was that there was a technical issue. That was it. That was the explanation. We don't know if there's something wrong. We, we can't tell you what you're owed. We can tell you there's a technical issue. They were promised, of course, that it would be rectified. They waited one month, two months, three months. Big technical issue. Four months, five months, six months, seven months. And on the eighth month, the technical issue, uh, which I imagine was just poor policy design, uh, which is a huge technical issue in this place at the moment, uh, it was rectified and they finally got their payments. How many other Australian families are dealing with this on a daily basis or indeed being underpaid because they just can't stand the pain of dealing with the Department of Human Services, a department that I must say also could do with a few extra staff and maybe some of these technical issues uh, would actually be resolved. The challenges in this sector aren't uh, we've had sort of about 10 years of major reform and I think if we're going to get to where we need to be as a country we're going to need probably another 10 years of major reform. This morning I helped launch the State of Early Learning in Australia report. Highlights and I think sometimes it's kind of like saying I believe in climate change. Some, you have to sort of like state these really blatantly obvious things just to start the conversation but it highlighted the quote long-term benefits of early education for children. We're still having this fight that trying to justify that this is important for young people. Um, the report had many interesting facts, but I'm just going to quote a few things. It does note that we haven't realised the benefits of early, uh, providing early learning for all children in this country. It noted that we're not distributing across key equity groups the benefits of early childhood education. It noted that uh, Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander, children from low socioeconomic areas and children with a disability are not getting equitable access to early learning. And it noted that we do have structural factors and policy settings differing across jurisdictions which holds back our ability to effectively roll out quality early childhood education in all parts of this country. And there are some hard truths in it. For my state of Western Australia, it noted that the highest proportion of early childhood education care services receiving lower ratings or working towards the national quality standards was in Western Australia. That's not good enough. But we need to be honest about where we're at and where we want to go. The critical work that is um, done by educators and in the sector is well known. I think we should also place this in an international context, though. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals say that universal access to early childhood education should be something we should strive to by 2030. Now, Australia is a pretty good country. I'm pretty sure we could get there earlier than 2030 if we wanted to. But this, that Sustainable Development Goal states that by 2030, all girls and boys should have access to quality early childhood development, care and pre-primary education so that they're ready for primary education. And that's where we get to this discussion about the two years of preschooling funding. Um, the reports of a week ago that this funding might, that the funding for four-year-olds might be on the chopping block would just be absolute madness. It would destroy the educational opportunities that young people have. It will cause havoc for families across this country who rely on that funding to help them balance their budgets. And it takes us in the wrong direction. We should actually be talking about how do we fund three-year-olds to get into that, service, into that education environment. It makes such a positive start for young people to be able to have that opportunity. And in terms of what we pay versus what we get, it's a transformative investment. Uh, we know that the first thousand days make a huge difference. Uh, there was some research from the Telethon Kids Institute that said the costs of late intervention, that is acting too late, trying to fix these things up because we were too tight, too scared of spending a little bit of money. when children and young cost $15.2 billion every year because children and young people experience serious issues that lead to crises, lead to law enforcement, leads to challenges with child protection, 
that, had we have invested earlier, could have been prevented. Um, Deputy Speaker, I'll leave my remarks there.